Hi, I'm John Doggart, and this is my house, and I want to show you what we did to reduce our carbon emissions by 70% from a solid walled Victorian house. We came to this house about 12 years ago, and we've been doing energy serving things to it ever since then. But last summer we decided we'd have a real bash and complete the work to get the 70% improvement that we all need to achieve by 2050. How did we apply it to this house? Well, we took a process of putting insulation first of all to cocoon the whole house. And on the front of the house, the one that's seen from the street and has the Victorian details on it, we did it from the inside so that we wouldn't disturb the looks of the house. And we did that by putting 100 millimetres of insulation here, you can see it, 4 inches, on the inside of the street elevation. What's behind this 4 inches is studs of uh, insulated columns here at intervals that go across the, the facade uh, on the inside and then in between is a rock wall type of material that's put in there and then over the top of it all is plasterboard. On the other sides of the house we've insulated it on the outside because it makes it easier from the inside we didn't have to do so many changes there and it makes the house look just like it used to before which was of um, rendered appearance. The material is this 100 millimetres of 4 inches of polystyrene foam which is behind the surface here. That's fixed on by drilling holes and pushing these plugs in which are then hammered home to make mechanical fixing and the material has also got an adhesive between it and the wall. Where it comes to the corners we use this mesh that's fixed on before it's plastered. The material is cut where necessary to take small pipes but large pipes have to be taken to the outside of the building and, and extended out so that the material goes behind. Finally, there is a render coat put on top of all this, which you can see here. The cocooning continues round on the roof. Normally people have pitch roofs, here is a flat roof, which is also quite common, and here we put insulation on top of the asphalt. Uh, this is the material, it's a waterproof foam uh, roof mate and just sits on top of the existing asphalt and then it's covered by duck boards like this uh, and it's very simple to do because I did it myself. Having cocooned the house we then go to the next stage of stopping the drafts. Victorian houses are notoriously drafty and we've taken steps here to make this three times better than the target for a new build house. How have we done that? Well first of all we took the old windows and we draft stripped them. Here you can see the draft stripping here that's been let in by grooving the, 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 the wood and then a piece of uh, draft stripping is pushed in. This should last us for 25 to 30 years and is unobtrusive. At the back of the house we had the opportunity to change our windows from the old windows to new ones because the planning constrictions are much lower there and in fact there was none here. So, we took the opportunity of using these very high performance windows which perform about twice as well as a conventional double glazing unit and that's done by having a wide cavity between the, the glasses, having a coating on the surface, a low emissive fatigue coating on the surface and also have argon gas filling between the cavities which is more insulating than normal air. Having insulated the house and draft stripped it, we still need some fresh air to come into the house. We have trickle ventilation here. This allows a little bit of air in. If you push this here and here, it will allow trickle ventilation to come through when you need it. And when you don't need it, you just push it back again. Having reduced the unwanted ventilation in the house, we still have to have ventilation for the areas which produce moisture vapour. That's the kitchen, the bathroom and the shower area. We do that by having in each of those places one of these units here which is an extract fan but an extract fan with a difference in that it's got another tube a tube that comes into the house as well as going out and the air that's coming into the house is heated by the outgoing air 
so that we get 80% of our energy is recovered in that way. Having dealt with the heat losses from the house, we then have to provide still some energy, of course, and that we provide with a condensing gas boiler, um, which is rather smaller than the normal one and deals with the whole house. During bad weather, the radiators still didn't come on very often, so much so that we had to find another way of drying our clothes. And we've also looked at reducing the water demand by taking rainwater, storing it in a grey tank you can see here, and that goes to the toilets when it's needed. We've reduced our need for artificial lighting by increasing our natural day lighting to put in little glass blocks in the walls in order to allow some light in. To provide all the artificial lighting we need, we are using compact fluorescence throughout. We're not too happy with compact fluorescence, so what we've got here is LED lights, which are straight replacements for tungsten halogen. This is an LED fitting here, and this is a tungsten halogen one, and you can see they're identical, except the LED one uses seven times less energy than the tungsten halogen. We have A-rated appliances where we can, and they have undoubtedly helped to reduce our energy requirements. We also use an OWL energy monitor here. It's wireless, so we can carry it around the house, and when you switch on an appliance, such as the kettle here, I'll switch that on, you see the display of 0.193 will change rapidly to, to 2.4 here to tell us what this kettle is using. So we can instantly, pretty well instantly see what our appliances are using, including standby, and see if we have to take steps to reduce it. And then when we switch it off again, it'll drop back down again in due time. To help us in the project, we had an excellent advisor and an excellent builder. We now have a house that is more comfortable to live in, uses much less fuel, helps to save the world, and is worth more too, probably 10 to 20,000 more at least in the value of the house. Would we do it again? You bet we would. More details are available on the website www.s-ea.org. UK. This house is part of the Old Home Super Home group of houses which have all saved at least 60% of their carbon.